This is Twit. So as you know, the vast majority of people in the universe, in the world, are not experts on antitrust, uh, these competition regulation issues. So it's wonderful that we have a panel like this to uh, talk about some of these uh, some of these issues, some of these nuances. And of course, the big news story for the last couple of weeks has been the Comcast Time Warner uh, merger. Uh, so Professor, uh, Professor Waller, I'd like to, to talk to you first about this. You know, from time to time in the news, we hear stories of big corporations, big service providers or big producers of, of whatever, big participants in the market. Uh, two, two or more of those coming together uh, for a merger um, on the scope of something like this. Could we just start from a very general level and help us understand how we should start thinking about the relevant issues to unpack when we hear a news story about two big companies coming together like this? Sure. Um, so we're sitting in 2014, and um, this is the 100th anniversary of the Clayton Act, which is one of the two big antitrust laws, the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act. And in 1914, Congress passed a law um, that made uh, mergers unlawful if they have a tendency, not, not in actuality, but just a tendency to substantially lessen competition or ten tendency to um, uh, create a monopoly. And we're 100 years in, we don't look at size, we look at power. So in general, we look at the relevant market the firms compete in and their effect on consumers and competition. And so uh, it, it's not really just the, the size. For example, th there are enormous corporations. Chrysler is huge, but it doesn't have a great deal of power. You wouldn't worry too much unless uh, they merged with General Motors or Ford or something like that. So in, in this case, uh, large mergers above $200 million get reported to both the Justice Department and the FTC. Uh, they decide among themselves which one will review it, and then they apply the Clayton Act uh, that, that I just described. They get some filings from the companies, and then they almost always, in a merger that has any serious potential for harm, uh, file what's called a second request where they ask the companies for a huge amount of uh, documents, and then they begin to run a very full investigation of the market. So that, that's the process. That's a little bit of the substance. Uh, in the area of media mergers, it's uh, one level more complicated because in addition to the antitrust review, there's a review by the Federal Communications Commission that uh, looks at competition issues and also looks at a broader kind of public interest standard. But those are the two things that are going to go on in this merger. How do you go about measuring the power that's at stake here. I know you made the distinction between size and, and, and power when it comes to the analysis here. How, what, what kind of factors go into thinking about the power of the parties yeah. involved? Well, there's two things going on. Um, there's two sets of crystal balls going on. The government um, uh, it has to get a crystal ball because in these cases, the parties can't merge. They can't finish the deal until the antitrust review has been complete. Um, so the government's predicting what is the likely, not the inevitable, but the likely uh, effect of, of this merger. And then uh, the parties have some uh, opportunity to put get out their crystal ball and say, no, 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 that's not right. Entry is easy. There might be some efficiencies. There are other things you ought to consider. But the government has that first uh, crack at it and has that first obligation to look into the future and figure out what's likely to happen. So what is power? Power in the law is the power to raise price or the power to exclude competition. It can be either one of those. 